Hey everyone, guess what? This is our last lesson of algebra. So here we go, let's dive in. 10.8, we are going to work on combinations and permutations. You don't know what they are yet, but you will by the end of the lesson. So first, let's take a look at an example to set this up. Consider this. For a main dish, you can choose steak or chicken. I'll underline that as we go along. Your side dish can be rice or potatoes, and your drink can be tea or water. How many possible meals can you create with one of each? So we're gonna kind of draw this out just to visualize what's happening here. So first, you get a main dish, dish, steak or chicken. So we have steak and we have chicken. So. If we chose steak, we have an option to add on a side. Our side dish can be rice or potato. So let's say we choose steak and rice. Well, we also could choose steak or potatoes. So already we're getting different meals as we change sides or um, the main dish, or you'll see with the drink in a moment. We could also choose chicken with the rice or chicken with the potatoes. All right, so we've got our main dish, we've got our side dish, and now we're gonna have tea or water with each of these. So if we do steak and rice, then we have the option, I'm just gonna say T for tea and W for water. Well, we could have done steak and potatoes and then have tea or choose water. So those are all different meals. Um, if we went the chicken route, chicken, rice, and tea or water, or chicken, potatoes with tea or water. So what you see is we have several different possible meals that we created. We've got steak, rice with tea, steak, rice with water. That's, those are different meals. Steak, potatoes with tea, steak, potatoes with water, chicken, rice with tea, chicken, rice with water, chicken, potatoes, and tea, chicken, potatoes, and water. So you get the idea here. We have all these different possible meals. How many total were there? I'm just gonna focus on the end. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So possible meals. We have eight possible meals. All right, so this is gonna lead us into something called the fundamental counting principle. What we just did, drawing out a little diagram, that's not really feasible to do um, with every example. As our options increase and get bigger, we just want to have a mathematical way to get that same answer of 8. And this is where we have the fundamental counting principle. If there are m ways to choose a first item and n ways to choose a second item after the first item has been chosen, then there are m times n ways to choose both items. So we multiply our options together to figure out how many possibilities there are. Um, the fundamental counting principle can also be used when there are more than two items to choose. So let's look at an example that will use the FCP. We have a florist is arranging centerpieces that include one flower, one plant, and one vase. The florist has two kinds of vases. So I'm going to focus on we have two kinds of vases two kinds of plants, and three kinds of flowers to choose from. How many different centerpieces are possible? So the fundamental counting principle tells us that we can just multiply all of these um, options together to get the total number of ways that we can combine these. So two times two is four, four times three is 12, there are 12 different centerpieces possible. Oops, I don't need to say possible again. 20 different centerpieces. Whoa. So there's your fundamental counting principle. All right, we've got a little bit of vocab to fill in here. A compound event. Oh, let me get my pen.
consists of two or more simple events. So for example, a rolled number landing on a three is a simple event. A coin tossed and landing on heads is a simple event. When we put those together, that is called a compound event. Um, a combination, there we go, is a grouping of outcomes in which order does not matter. All right, this is the key. When your order does not matter, we are looking at a combination. We'll go through some examples so you see what that means, but that is the key, most important thing right there. Okay, um, we've got another vocab word, a permutation. Oh, there we go. Is an arrangement of outcomes in which the order does matter. So again, that is the important thing we have to remember with permutations. So let's take a look at what we're talking about. Math vocab doesn't always make sense until we see some examples. So tell whether each situation involves combinations or permutations, then give the number of possible outcomes. So example A, a street vendor sells cashews, peanuts, and almonds. How many different ways are there to mix two kinds of nuts? So let's say I mix cashews with peanuts. Now, if I had done peanuts first and cashew second, if I change the order, is that considered a different mixture of those two kinds of nuts? And it is not. It would be the exact same thing. So in this case, order does not matter. I just kind of tested it out. Order does not matter. This is going to be a combination. I'll just use a C for combination. But well, how else can we do this? We can do cashews with peanuts. We can do cashews with almonds. And we can also do peanuts with almonds. And that's going to cover all the different ways that we can mix two kinds of the nuts. So we have one, two, three different ways. All right, example B. Karen is painting her bedroom. She has orange, green, blue, and purple paint. She plans to use one color as a base coat and stencil a design with another color. How many different ways can she do this? So here's what we're talking about. Let's say she takes her, her green paint and she does a base coat. And then she's gonna take another color, what else does she have, blue, and she is going to stencil the design over it, okay? So let's say that she uses those same colors but chooses the blue first and then stencils a design with that, are these considered the same thing? You can see that we use the same colors, but would that be considered the same thing? And in this case, nope, not at all, very different. So we are looking at order does matter. And when order matters, it is gonna be a permutation. Okay, before we get into the specifics of combinations and permutations, there is something you need to know about math, and it is called a factorial. A factorial is this little thing that looks like an exclamation point after your number. So five, this right here is read five factorial. What that means, I keep writing it in erases. Okay, what that means is you start with the number you're given, so five factorial is five, and you're going to multiply by every number in descending order until you get to 1. 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. That's 5 factorial. We go ahead and multiply. 5 times 4 is 20. 20 times 3 is 60. 60 times 2 is 120. And 120 times 1 is 120. Um, how about 7? Oh, not 7. <laughs> We're not there yet. 3 factorial is you start with 3 and you, multi you multiply in descending order until you get to 1. 3 times 2 times 1 is 6, so 3 factorial equals 6. Um, 7 factorial, I'm going to show you guys a little trick because this is something we might look at. So 7 factorial is, start with 7 times 6 times 
Now five times four times three times two times one is how I would finish this. But I'm gonna stop and say five factorial because that five factorial is representing the rest of it. And the reason why I did that is because we already know what five factorial is. It's 120. So I'm just gonna save myself a little bit of work and just substitute in 120. And now we just have less numbers to multiply. And we will get 5,040. All right, so why did we need to know about factorials? Because we have formulas for permutations and combinations and the factorials are used within the formulas over here. So our permutation formula, the number of permutations of n things chosen r at a time is this formula over here. Um, npr equals n factorial over n minus r factorial. That doesn't make any sense. Let me show you with an example so that we can make sense of it. So this first example says a club will choose a president, a vice president, and a secretary from a list of eight people. How many ways can the club choose the three officers? So does order matter? That's the first question. I mean, we're right underneath permutation, so guess what? This is a permutation. But let's make sure we understand why it's a permutation. Um, if you have three people filling the spots of president, vice president, and secretary, and they switch positions, is that a different thing? And yeah, it absolutely would be a different thing. So order does matter. So here's what we do. This eight people, whatever your total is, is always going to be your n value. So we're going to say n. Oh, no, we're not. We're going to plug that in. We're going to say 8 P, and then our R is how many positions are we picking? We've got president, vice president, and secretary, so we're going to pick three positions. When I use permutation, I use the word pick. So here's how I would say this. 8, and we're going to pick three of them. So we've got 8 people, and we're picking three for these positions. Um, this 8 is your N, and this 3 is your R. So I'm just going to look up at the formula. Um, n factorial, so 8 factorial over n minus r, so 8 minus 3 factorial. So we've got 8 factorial over 5 factorial. Now when we simplify this, we're going to save ourselves a little bit of work by doing what I'm about to show you. So 8 factorial is 8 times 7 times 6 times five, and I keep, keep, could keep going five, four, three, two, one, but I see that there's a five factorial in the denominator, so I'm gonna stop and put a factorial after the five because that represents the rest of the multiplication. We're gonna put this over five factorial. Now you have a five factorial over a five factorial, and guess what? Those, whoa. Uh, those cancel, and really all we have to left all we have left to multiply is 8 times 7 times 6. So when we multiply those together, we get 336. So there are 336 different ways that the club can choose those three officers. All right, let's look at our combination formula. So if you know that the situation is a combination situation where the order does not matter, we have this formula over here. Again, we've got n total things and we're choosing r of them and we plug it into this. So let's look at our example. A club will form a three person committee from a list of eight people. How many ways can the club choose the three people? So does order matter? If you're choosing a three person committee and you pick the same three people in a different order, does that change the committee members? No, they don't have designated roles, so this is a combination because the order does not matter. So we are going to fill in. Now your total, that's going to be your N, eight people, and how many people you're choosing for your committee is R. So we're going to say eight choose three. Now if you notice, I've changed up my phrasing a little bit. As soon as I'm talking about a combination, I use the word choose. So eight choose three. Again, eight is your N and three is your R. So we're just gonna plug it in. N factorial goes on top. 
over r factorial, so 3 factorial times n minus r. Nope, we're going to plug those numbers in. Just kidding. Uh, 8 minus 3 factorial. So we've got 8 factorial over 3 factorial, 5 factorial, because 8 minus 3 give us 5. So when we simplify this, we've got 8 times 7 times 6 times. Again, as soon as I hit that 5 factorial and I see that there's 1 in the denominator, I'm just going to leave it at 5 factorial. That represents the rest of the multiplication. We've got a 3 factorial on the bottom, so 3 times 2 times 1 times, and I'm just going to carry down that 5 factorial because we're going to cancel those. So now what we're going to do is some um, reducing before we multiply. We're looking to see, do any numbers on the bottom reduce with any numbers on the top? And there's a cool little trick you guys can do. Do you guys see how we have a 3 times a 2 down here? 3 times 2 is 6. And I can see that there's a 6 in the numer numerator. So this 3 times 2, which is 6, can cancel with that 6 up there. All I have down here left is a 1. We can divide by 1 and it won't change our answer, so we don't have to worry about that. And we are left with 8 times 7, which is 56. So how many ways can the club choose the three people? 56 ways.